I'm Larry Menti. Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we come to you from Trenton this week in the State House. We're on the floor of the Senate right now where there will not be a vote on a constitutional amendment to require payments to the underfunded pension fund. We'll talk to Senate President Steve Sweeney about why that's not going to happen. And in one North Jersey town, you get rid of a traffic circle and business booms. Those stories and much, much more because Jersey Matters. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We come to you this week from Trenton, New Jersey, the state capital. And there is a, a swirl of controversy almost as always around the state capital. Some topics that you are familiar with, the transportation fund, a gas tax, the pension fund, school reform. And at the center of it all, almost as always, is the uh, Senate President Steve Sweeney, who joins us now from his office. I really appreciate the time. Yeah, Thank you so much. Let's start with the fight over the pension fund. And the obvious question, there is not going to be an amendment on the ballot this November. Well, with the uncertainty with the gas tax, it was guaranteed to lose. And if it went down, Larry, it would be three years before it could be implemented again. And at that point, you have the situation where the courts told us we didn't have to make the payment. And now if the people tell you you don't have to make the payment, why would the government make the payment? You know, because he's been at odds with these people. I haven't been. I Recently, obviously, I have been because they're mad at me because I told them, hey, listen, some things have changed. And if you can't recognize that sometimes things change and, and, you know, and you have to do things what's best, I'm sorry. They're wrong for, you know, being as angry as they are, the teachers. But, you know, I care about their pensions more than anybody and, and have fought longer to try to fund their pensions more than anyone. Yeah, you were pretty angry yourself. Uh, and you came out and accused the, the teachers' union and the police union of extortion and, and, and wanted a criminal investigation. Have you backed off on that? No. And one reason. If, you, if I came to you and said, Larry, give me $5,000 and I'll pass this piece of legislation, where do you think I would be right now? What they were saying was a specific action, that they were not going to contribute unless I did this. And that's crossing the line. What I feel is when... Who said that to you? Well, it was, it was recorded in the press. You know, they were calling chairman and everyone else that if I don't do this, then they're not going to contribute funding. But there must be a specific person. I mean, if you want criminal charges brought against somebody or a it's, criminal it's, investigation... Well, we already announced it was, it was about the teachers union and the FOP had both came out and, and basically tied it specifically. When you're taking an act, a specific act, I read the Hobbs Act, and the Hobbs Act, the Federal Hobbs Act, you can't do that. It's a quid pro quo. You can say, hey, listen, I, I, I'd like you to support these pieces of legislation, but you can't say that I'm, you know, unless you do this, I'm not going to give you that. And, and Larry, it, it's, it's, like I said, flip the table. If I came to you and said, I'm going to do this if you give me $5,000. What would you call that? You've been in, in media long. You've seen, a lot of, you've seen that happen a lot of time with elected officials. It's called a bribe. You know, you can't tie it specifically. I'm not talking about money in politics being unusual and, and people pushing for initiatives and, 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 and trying to get, gather their support. You know, that's part of the process. But you can't link it the way they did. And that's why I said they went over the, over the line. And on top of it, they were wrong anyway. The pension, f if they cared about their members as much as I do, then they wouldn't want to put an initiative up that had zero chance of passing this year. And what do they tell their members? Oh, it failed. So now we wait three years for someone to decide whether they want to fund again. You know, it's, it's, it's no different than when they had gotten fights with the unions back in 06. When I got in a fight with the unions back in 2006, they wanted to raise the sales tax a penny. I told them then. Raising the sales tax won't fix, fix the pension. They get the sales tax. Why is the pension still broke? How far are you willing to take this? Are you, are you really going to push for criminal charges? Are you going to stay with the investigation? Well, I sent letters to the U.S. attorney and the attorney general in the state, and it's up to them to decide whether there's any merits. But I'm not backing away from what I said. Charlie Stiles, I don't know if you ever read Charlie Stiles in, mm -hmm. in the Bergen County record, he is accusing you of playing politics with this. He's, he's said specifically you're trying to reposition yourself because people see you as a political insider and you are going by Chris Christie's playbook. 
in trying to run for governor next year. That's what this is all about. That's not the first time Charlie would have insulted me. He does it, he does it on a regular basis, and he's got a right to do that. You know, everyone has an opinion. Uh, no, this was a really tough thing for me to do, Larry. I've been the one in 2007 instituted, did advanced a constitutional amendment. In 2011, we actually passed it in the Senate. It was a Sweeney Kane bipartisan bill in 2011. So this is something I've been at for a long time. This isn't Chris Christie's playbook. You know, it wasn't Chris Christie that wanted to reform benefits. I was the one who wanted to fix it because the pension was going broke well before Chris Christie ever got there. So what happens now? Uh, how do we fix the pension system if not this year when? I know you said something about 2017. Is that a guarantee? Is that a promise? It's, it's, it's an absolute possibility if we can get this fixed. Listen, Larry, we made the, two, we made the pension payment this year, this last budget, $1.3 billion, which the unions and everyone agreed to, after cutting $1.1 billion out of the pension. We have in the budget this year $1.9 billion to pay the pension payment. So we're on schedule, on the agreed upon schedule with everyone. So we first, we first and foremost, we got to set it up so it can win. And having such an, un, look, when the assembly agreed with the governor on a $2 billion budget buster, you know, it wouldn't be hard to go out there and say, you, the state's broke, they can't make this payment, and watch the thing go down. I want to make sure that the workers get the pensions they were promised. I've been at it for a long time. Uh, unfortunately, every time I fight over this and I fight for them, I wind up getting smacked. But, you know, it's no different than 2006 when they had rats and, you know, and all everything else. They were hollering and fighting. If they would have gone along in 2006, the pension fix was this big. There wouldn't have been any crisis in the pension system. I get to say I was right. doesn't make me feel good. Uh, there's so much more to talk about. We want to yeah. talk about the, uh, the, the gas tax, obviously, and the transportation fund and, and school funding. I especially want to find out where you are in the gas tax, because I think everybody is waiting for that and for the roads to get fixed. We'll continue the conversation with Senate President Steve Sweeney when Jersey Matters continues.